Okay, so, so far we have talked about what is the idea of the priority to ADT. Then we introduce these new set of invariants for binary trees, the heap invariants that can lead us to a binary heap. And now in our last video, we're gonna tie these two together. We're gonna describe how can I use a binary heap to implement the operations of the priority queue ADT. And we'll see why this heap is a really good candidate implementation for this ADT. So let's consider one of the operations, peak min. So finding the smallest value. Assume we're maintaining a binary heap. So how do we do peak min? Well, this is actually really straightforward. The minimum value, as I argued earlier, is always the node at the top, right? It's the one node that's always great, uh, less than or equal to all of its children, which are less than or equal to their children and so on. So that if we have a binary heap, we know that the smallest value is at the top. So peak, really straightforward. Now, and not only is it really straightforward to think about, but it's also really, really efficient. We have this theta of one runtime because we always have a reference to the top of the tree. Now, how might I actually go about implementing remove min? So just like peak, the value we want to remove, that two is at the top. So we could say, okay, well, I want to re remove the minimum value. I'll return that in a second. But we've now caused a problem if we just took out that node. Um, we don't have a tree anymore, right? We have this kind of weird two subtrees. And so we need some way to fix that. So we need to take some node and move it to the top. Now, you're probably thinking something like, oh, should I take the minimum value, the next minimum value, and move it to the top? And that is a really good idea, but it's actually going to turn out to be really hard to implement because what's the next minimum value here? It's a four. So if I remove the four up, then what do I put in the spot that the four was? And then we kind of cause all of this kind of mayhem. So we're going to do an algorithm that is completely not obvious why this is going to work out, but I promise you it's going to end up working. What we're going to do is we're going to take the easiest value to move at the top. Remember, binary heaps have to be complete trees. So all of the nodes in the tree have to, all the rows have to be fully present, uh, completely full, except for that last one. And remember in that last row, all of the non-null nodes have to be at the, the left of the tree. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the last inserted value, the thing that's kind of at the bottom right, and pull that one out. Because notice if I remove that tree or remove that node, it's not gonna necessarily break my complete tree invariant. So I'm gonna just take that last node and move it to the top. Now, you probably can already see a problem here where I don't know if I'm still meeting this heap invariant. Sure, I've satisfied the heap structure invariant. This is a complete tree, right? The reason we did this was to make sure it was easy to maintain that invariant. But you could probably see here that I have violated the heap invariant. So removing is actually a three-step process. Remove the minimum value, take that node at the bottom to bring it to the top, and then we need to do one more operation to restore the heap invariant. We call this operation percolate down. The idea of this, uh, this uh, algorithm is we've brought this new value up to the top, let it fall down the tree until it's in its right spot. So the way we do this per percolate down is we start at the top of the tree with this newly moved node, and we move it down the tree, swapping it with its children if, whenever we find a child that's smaller. So for example, here, you're always going to um, swap it with its smallest child. So 13 breaks this at the top, breaks the heap invariant because 13 is greater than both four and seven. So what the percolate down operation says is swap them. Swap 13 with its child that's smallest. So we're gonna swap it uh, 13 with four. And we keep doing this over and over again until 13 sticks the landing in a spot where both of its children are greater. So then we're gonna say, okay, well, I need to keep doing this again, swap it with its smallest child. Um, in this case, its smallest child is five. So swap it with five. And then in this case, it's still greater than its children. So we need to swap it with its child. And then once we, it reaches a leaf node, we know we're good. We don't need to put it down any further because there's nowhere further down to go. And so now we've just restored the heap invariant. 
So that's why it was ended up being okay for us to stick that kind of weird note at the end at the top, because this percolate down will re-satisfy the heap invariant. So let's think about what's the runtime of this operation. Well, I would argue that the runtime for removing was kind of three parts, right? It was that remove the min from the top, which is easy to do. But then it's really bounded by, well, how long does it take us to find that last element, that element at the bottom right? How long does it take it to move it to the top? And then how long do we have to go down? My argument is that all of this is bounded by logarithmic runtime. Because our tree has logarithmic height, um, um, you can or are, you are able to find that last node um, with some extra bookkeeping of keeping track of kind of where it is, but you could just do that with one extra field. And once you do this percolate down, well, you're only going to do log n swaps in the worst case because you're only going to swap once at each height level. So we could still get this kind of beautiful uh, ordered binary heap in logarithmic time. So remove is going to be a logarithmic runtime. Um, and this is exactly why we need that heap structure invariant. We want the height of the tree to be, tree to be small. So when we ever have to do an operation that goes all the way down to the leaf nodes, it's going to have a fast runtime. So the height of these structures directly correlates to its runtime. So I want you to practice this. Here is a binary heap. I want us to call remove min. And I want you to tell me what's going to happen here. How are we going to actually go about um, uh, replacing this, uh, this tree in such a way to maintain that binary heap property? Um, the answer format for this is free response. I, I'm not looking for something in a particular format. Just make sure you describe, like, do it on a piece of paper. How is this tree actually going to transform? And what nodes are going to be changed? So take a second and try that out. OK, so here we're going to follow this three step process. So first we remove the minimum node. So we're going to remove the five. And then we said we replace it with the bottom level rightmost node. So I'm going to replace it with an 18. So bring that up there. Then I need to do a percolate down. Always go down the tree, replacing the node that we just uh, took, put at the top with the smaller of its children if it's, uh, if it's greater than any of its children. So here I swapped nine and 18 because nine was its smallest child. Here it's still greater than its children. So I need to swap uh, it with its smallest child. In this case, it's 11. But now both of its children are greater than it. So we know we found the right place. And so this percolate down can stop. So 18 will fall down into this location. Now you might be wondering in this percolate down operation, why are we always swapping it with the smallest child? Can't I just swap it with any child maybe? Well, it turns out that we this smallest child invariant or smallest child part of the algorithm is really, really important. For example, suppose in that earlier example, we put the 13 at the top and suppose I wanted to switch the 13 and the seven. Well, if I swap 13 and seven, then I haven't fixed my heap invariant because seven has a left child that's four or is less than seven, which that means I've broken the heap invariant. So it turns out by always swapping with the smallest child, you're, you can't ever re-break that invariant again. You might have to keep percolating that value originally put up down, but um, you don't have to go back and fix anything else in the tree, which is really, really great. So that's remove. Remove is take the thing up the top, first step. Second step, take that rightmost node at the bottom, bring it up to the top, and then let it percolate down. Now let's talk about add. Add is going to be somewhat similar, but reverse in, in, in some sense. So adding, we're always going to insert the node in the bottom level to ensure that there's no gaps. So suppose I wanted to add a new number like three, I always stick it down in the bottom to make sure that we meet this complete tree invariant. But you probably could see with these numbers, since I just stuck the new value I added in at the end, I have violated the heap invariant. I don't have that order where every node is less than or equal to its children. So we're going to do kind of the opposite of a percolate down. We're going to use this operation called percolate up. So now we put this node down and we're going to let it float to the top to wherever its right place is. So if that node we added is ever less than its parent, we swap it with its parent until we finally reach a spot where it belongs, where it is now greater than its parent. Now, let me briefly mention, these percolate up and percolate down operations 
are useful abstractions to think about on our implementation, the binary heap. But these are not behaviors that are provided by the priority queue ADT because our unsorted array or sorted doubly linked list or ABL tree, they don't need these operations. In some sense, these are like the private methods of a class. And we uh, would most designs of these binary heaps would include a private method for percolate up or percolate down. Now, just like with remove min, we might have to do log n swaps to go up the tree. And so this uh, add also has log n runtime. And so if we think back to what we've just seen so far, um, and um, we've just seen we can implement remove min, add, and peak all relatively efficiently. Peak, theta of one. Remove min and add, theta of log n. And so it's in some sense similar to that AVL tree implementation, but we get that fast peak just from the structure of the tree. We don't have to keep track of extra stuff. However, one thing that's a bit weird about this is it's still not necessarily our best implementation that we'll come up with. It turns out that finding that last spot in the tree is actually really hard to implement on a plain tree like this. It's definitely doable and you can do it in constant time uh, to keep track of all that extra information. So it will end up being a log in operation to do this add and remove min because we can kind of find that spot relatively easily. However, it's kind of a pain to code up. So we're going to show you a completely different implementation of this binary heap idea that actually makes these methods a bit easier to operate on. But as a bit of a cliffhanger, that's what we're talking about on Friday. So in section tomorrow, we're going to um, talk about how to implement this, um, or get practice with this idea of the tree heap. And we'll give a bit of a preview of what that thing is going to look like that we're going to introduce on Friday.